And in the day of that he went to work, this is what he looked like. A very proud man who came from southern Italy during very difficult times with his wife and two children. And look at him here, dressed with his nice shirt and tie and a sweater, ready to go to work. That's how I remember him. And I wonder what he would think if he came back today and saw me with these running shoes, he's laughing at me, <laughs> with this golf shirt and shorts, he would never understand that in front of my fig tree. So I write about him and then write about uh, the house that I grew up in. My grandparents lived on the second floor, like many of you, same story. My parents and I and my brother on the third floor, my mother's sister and her family on the first floor of a three-story house in Mount Pleasant. So people say to me, how do you remember all these stories? Now, how does this come back to you? Well, for a long time, for six years, I was the only kid in that house. I was the king, the prince, everything, the firstborn in that house. So I got a lot of attention and got to spend a lot of time with everybody in that house and in that neighborhood. So my memory is good. But I also have relatives. I have an aunt who just passed away, and at 95, she was sharp as a tack. Uh, and, and if I didn't remember things, I would call her and say, what about? And I have cousins who are in the late 80s. What about? Do you remember? Am I right about this? And I also have the resource at the library. I use the Providence Public Library. This is a great resource to find things. The librarians couldn't be more helpful. And they have at least the Providence Public Library, and that's why I use them, that every edition of the Providence Journal from the very first edition. So that if I'm thinking of a street in town or trolley cars that I wrote about in, in the paper some time ago, they help me understand where they went, what it looked like, they have pictures, they have all kinds of things. And I have pictures. And that to me is one of the most important things. I've taken all those pictures that my parents had and my aunts had that were in shoeboxes in drawers, I scanned them into the computer. And with that, it helps me remember. Do I remember what, you know, I write about the wallpaper in my house, do I remember that? No. But I have a picture that I can look at and then describe it and make the story more comfortable and more real. So, uh, and here are some of the pictures. Uh, this is a picture of my great-grandfather who lived with us for a while till he passed away. And great-grandmother and my grandmother and my grandfather, there he is with his tie, they're at some sort of event where they're wear, wearing sailor's caps. So when you look at a picture, what you want to think about, what's going on in this picture? What's important? Why are they there? My guess, um, and I think my, here's the aunt who was uh, just passed away at 95. This is a story, this is a day trip to Oakland Beach. This mm -hmm. is where they went on the trolley for mm -hmm. a summer Sunday. And this is definitely a summer because they a Sunday because they're dressed. Or it's an outing. And look at this picture of my father here and his family. Now you you got to know that this Sunday was a hot Sunday and these kids were not happy taking this picture. <laughs> you can make that story. But from that comes this story. This is my grandfather. My father's father, this, this, this is my mother, mother's parents, my father's father. This is not his wife. <laughs> this story, this is his 16-year-old daughter, my father's sister. At the birth of the youngest child, their mother passed away. And the six of them, seven, moved in with a family down the street, two bedrooms, one kitchen, six other kids and two other adults in that house on Federal Hill. This aunt, who passed away at 101 years old, I was talking to uh, someone about how many 100-year-old people are on now, but she just passed away. She raised these kids, never married, and lived long enough to see them all pass. So there's a story there in this backyard on Tell Street. And there, uh, there were two behemoth houses, two houses, two six tenement houses side by side. I remember them because I went to visit my aunts when I was a kid, because they still live there uh, for many years. And in those two houses were 100 kids, 12 tenements, 100 kids. They pour out of the, my father said it was just crazy. Babylonian, they would call it. <laughs> so you look at these pictures and there's a story. And this is what I try to tell. And I have this. 
uh, my wife Diane, who's sitting in the back, and you'll have a chance to meet, uh, found these diaries at my mother's house. These are my grandfather's diaries. I have six years of these diaries. Now you need to know that the Italians and all most immigrants came here illiterate of this language. Most of them were illiterate of Italian. They couldn't read or write Italian. He was one who could. Now, it's hard to understand and decipher his penmanship, but as Italian, he writes. And here, if you look in December 1939, he has an entry, Io credo che verrà un altra guerra mondiale. What is he saying there? He's saying two years before the U.S. gets into the war, I believe there will be another world war. Okay, so here's this, this working man, perceptive, having lived through World War I, is realizing that something bad's going to happen here. And two years from this time, we get into the war. The U.S. gets into, then it becomes the World War. And, and it's and by definition. But in any event, if you look at this date, December 24th, 1939, no entry the day before Christmas. What happened? That was the day I was born. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But he does in the other diaries talk about his grandchildren and his daughters and 